Hello students, let's learn about air. Let's look at the picture given and identify what these people are doing. Pumping air into a cycle tube, blowing air in a rubber balloon and filling air in the tire of a car. Let's try one experiment. Take water in a big container. Take a small narrow container. Hold it upside down on the surface of the water and without tilting it, push it down into the water. Now allow it to tilt. What do you see? Bubbles rise at once to the top. Air is lighter than water. So bubbles rise to the top as soon as the container is tilted. It means that there was air even in the container that appeared to be empty. This tells us that air occupies space. Let's try another experiment. Take large sheets of any waste paper or obtain old newspapers of about one month and tear each of the sheets into four pieces. Now place these sheets of paper one at a time in a pile on the floor. As the pile grows, observe the difference that can be seen in the layers of paper at the top of the pile and those near the floor. What do you see? As we place more and more papers on the pile, the sheets at the lower level are pressed down by the sheets above them. The distance between the papers in the lower part of the pile becomes less while the papers in the upper part appear to be further apart. This tells us that the nearer a sheet of paper is to the floor, the greater is the number of papers above it. It means that the lower layers bear more weight than the upper layers of paper. Compared to that, the upper layers bear less weight. This tells us that air can be compressed. Let's learn about the atmosphere. The earth on which we live is round in shape like a ball. There is air all round the earth. If we go higher above the earth, we find that there is air till a height of almost 50 km. This covering of air around the earth is called the atmosphere. As we go further from the earth, the layers of air become thinner. That is, the layers of air closest to the earth are very close to each other, while the ones at higher levels are not so close. The air at greater heights is rare. Let's try one more experiment. Take a slightly deep dish like a saucer. Stand a candle at its center. Fill water in the dish. Light the candle. Now place a glass tumbler over the candle. What do you see? Soon the candle goes out and the level of water inside the tumbler rises up to a certain level. Why does this happen? One of the constituents of air helps burning. As it gets used up, water rises in the tumbler. When that constituent is finished, the candle goes out. The water level too stops rising. The constituent of air that helps burning is called oxygen. The Earth's atmosphere is made of air. If we divide the circle into five equal parts, then the oxygen in the air will be equal to one of the parts. The oxygen in the air is used both for burning and respiration. Let's see other uses of air. The gas that fizzes out of soda water is carbon dioxide. This gas is present in small quantities in air. The plants make food using air and water in the presence of sunlight. When plants make food, they use the carbon dioxide from the air. When ice is placed in a glass and it becomes very cold, droplets of water settle on its outside. It means that water too is present in the air in the form of a gas. However, the largest part of air is made up of still another kind of gas. This gas is called nitrogen. Thus, there are several gases present in air. In other words, air is a mixture of several gases. Now, if we draw a circle to represent air, then the quantity of each gas in the mixture will be as shown alongside. Do you know the burning that takes place in factories, vehicles, towns and kitchens etc. gives out smoke. This smoke too mixes with the air around us. Let's see some properties of air. Air takes up space. Air has weight. Air exerts pressure. Air can be compressed. Air is affected by altitude. Always remember we must not burn the wood from the environment. Thank you and please like and subscribe.